Please be aware that this video is intended as an educational resource only and should not be used as personal medical advice. All decisions about the management of your health or condition should be made in conjunction with your specialist or medical professional. So, what is a knee replacement? A knee replacement is a common type of surgery where the damaged knee is replaced with an artificial joint known as a prosthesis. A prosthesis is an artificial body part which replaces a damaged or missing part of your body. New materials and technology will in most cases allow you to have a normal and active life. During your consult, your surgeon will advise you on which is the most appropriate prosthesis for your age, lifestyle and bone quality. To better understand your procedure, we should take a few minutes to learn a little bit about your anatomy, the procedure, the risks and issues involved. Your knee joint is the largest joint in your body and contains four bones and a large collection of ligaments and muscles. The bones are the femur or thigh bone, the tibia or shin bone, and the smaller fibula and the patella or kneecap, and with only the femur and the tibia forming the knee joint itself. Where the femur and tibia meet is covered with articular cartilage, an extremely hard, smooth, slippery surface that allows smooth, pain-free movement in your joints. On both sides of the knee, there are two strips of long, flexible cartilage called the menisci that act as shock absorbers and help minimize friction. The stability of your knee joint is governed by four ligaments, which secure the knee together. These are the medial collateral ligament, or MCL, the lateral collateral ligament, or LCL, providing side-to-side -side support. Then, the anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL, and the posterior cruciate ligament, PCL, providing front to rear support. There are also bursas between the skin and the kneecap, the pre-patella bursa, and another above the kneecap, the supra-patella bursa. These are small sacs of synovial fluid, like tiny water balloons, with only a few drops of fluid in them, that cushion the knee while it's in motion. Each part of your knee needs to function properly for the knee to work as a whole. So, why might you need a knee replacement? A knee replacement is required when the pain or mobility problem is so bad that it actually interferes with the things that you want or need to do. The most common reason for knee replacement is osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis causes wear and tear over the years, destroying the smooth articular cartilage. This causes the bones of the joint to rub together. Also, gross in bone cause spurs may also form around the joint adding to the pain and stiffness. Knee deformities such as bowed legs or knocked knees where knees are not formed or aligned properly. Over time this will create stress on the joints and wear down cartilage unevenly leading to pain and disability. And lastly of course an actual injury of a knee caused by an accident or fall. It's good to know that a knee replacement will normally relieve pain and increase mobility in 90% of people who undergo the procedure. We begin with your diagnosis. Firstly, your surgeon will examine and evaluate your symptoms to ensure a proper diagnosis in order to provide the best treatment outcome. Your orthopedic surgeon will discuss and record your medical history, perform a physical examination, Request diagnostic studies such as X-rays or MRI. An MRI is magnetic resonance imaging, where magnetic and radio waves are used to create a more detailed computer image of soft tissue, nerves and ligaments. Your orthopedic surgeon could also suggest more conservative treatment options such as prescribing anti-inflammatory medications, referring you for physiotherapy, suggesting rest, suggesting you limit certain activities, or an injection of steroids and analgesics directly into the joint. Your surgery will be performed in a hospital operating room under general spinal, epidural, or local anaesthetic depending on you and your surgeon's wishes. During your surgery, your surgeon will remove the damaged knee joint and replace it with parts typically constructed of metal and very hard plastic. This artificial joint, or prosthesis, will help reduce pain and improve function. Your surgery will generally include the following steps. 
Firstly, your surgeon will make an incision down the front of your knee to gain access to the patella, more commonly referred to as the kneecap. The size and type of the incision may vary by age, sex, size and type of implant. Once the knee is open, the surgeon will rotate the patella or kneecap outside the knee area to allow space to perform the procedure. Then your surgeon will carefully measure your bones and cut away the damaged bone and cartilage. Then the femur is reshaped to match the implant so your surgeon can attach the implant to your femur with bone cement to fix it in place. Next, your surgeon will reshape your tibia or shin bone, removing bone and cartilage from the top of the tibia and shaping the bone to fit the implant. Then, your surgeon will attach a flexible cushion between the tibial and femoral implants to provide support as you bend and flex your knee. Before restoring the patella or kneecap to its natural position, your surgeon may need to flatten the back and fit it with a small plastic prosthesis to create a good fit with your new implant, or even replace it entirely with a prosthetic button. Next, your surgeon will test your knee to ensure the implant is working and the alignment, sizing and positioning are correct. To complete the procedure, your surgeon will close the incision with stitches or staples and bandage. Typically, you can return to light work and activities after six weeks and your knee implant is expected to last more than 10 years, though will naturally wear with age. After surgery, your surgeon will provide you with a post-operative course of action to aid your recovery. This will depend upon the type of surgery performed. Your post-operative plan may include specific instructions regarding your lifestyle, activity or rehabilitation, prescription medications to keep you comfortable at home, instructions about wound care and bathing, Typically, you may shower once the dressings are removed unless otherwise directed by your surgeon. And physiotherapy if required to restore normal function and strength. Benefits and risks. As with any surgery, there are always potential risks. Your decision to proceed with the surgery is made because the advantages of the surgery outweigh the potential disadvantages. It is important that you are informed of these risks before the surgery takes place. Complications can be medical, general or specific to the surgery. Medical complications include those of the anaesthetic and your general well-being. Potential complications. It should be noted that the vast majority of patients suffer no complications following surgery. However, complications can occur with any surgery and may include allergic reactions to medications, blood loss requiring transfusion with a low risk of disease transmission, heart attack, strokes, kidney failure, pneumonia and bladder infections, complications from the use of nerve blockers such as infection or nerve damage, serious ongoing medical problems or concerns leading to prolonged hospitalization or very rarely death. Specific complications Infections Infections at the incision site or a more serious infection at the location of the surgery. Nerve damage, tingling, pain and weakness from nerve damage or nerve trauma. This may be temporary or permanent and can cause numbness. Hemarthrosis, excess bleeding into the joint or surgery site. This may require additional arthroscopic surgery to irrigate the joint and evacuate or drain the blood. Blood clots or deep vein thrombosis. These typically form in the calf muscles and can travel to the lung, causing a pulmonary embolism. These can occasionally be serious or even life-threatening. If at any stage you get calf pain or shortness of breath, you should notify your surgeon immediately. The failure to relieve pain. This is rare but may occur, especially if pain is coming from other areas, such as the spine. There are risk factors that can negatively affect your healing after surgery, including general ill health, poor nutrition, smoking, obesity, diabetes, age, over 60, alcoholism, chronic illness, and steroid use. 
Weighing this all up and having a good understanding of the procedure is important. If you have any doubts, questions or queries, please consult your specialist or medical professional. If you'd like to find out more about Online Medical's videos or find out about getting your own branded content, contact Online Medical today, 1300 900 155.